about motherhood. One minute, your mom of the year. I love you, mommy. Then the next? <laughs> mm, not so much. From bath time to bullying, from potty training to puberty, parenting is full of challenges. But one thing is for certain, you are not alone. Welcome to Modern Mom Probs. I'm your host, author, mother, parenting expert, Tara Clark. Join me while we tackle today's Modern Mom Problems. Welcome back to another episode of Modern Mom Probs. I'm your host, Tara Clark. If you like what we're doing here, be sure to subscribe. Today, I'm joined by Pamela Peckerman. She is the founder of Hustle Like a Mom, a community and educational platform on a mission to empower the in-between drop-off and pick-up mom entrepreneur. She's been featured in Entrepreneur Magazine, the Product Boss Podcast, and morning TV shows from coast to coast. As a mom of two, Pamela understands the need for connecting with like-minded women that are doing, creating, and redefining what it means to be a working mom. Pamela, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Tara. I'm super excited to be here with your people. Yay, Love it. Me too. So Pamela, as I mentioned, you are a much sought after speaker in the areas of goal setting, branding, and mom entrepreneurism. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So as you mentioned, I'm the founder of Hustle Like a Mom, which is a community for the between drop-off and pick-up mompreneur. And so within that, right away, you know that my window for the non-homework, because work at home is still work, is tight. It's between nine and three o'clock. A lot of this came to be over time and obviously through COVID because I homeschooled the kids for 18 months. But even prior to that, I, I've been an entrepreneur for now almost 20 years. I come from the TV world. So I've done a lot of segments over the last few years on time-saving tips for busy moms, products that they would love and that kind of thing. And then I, I remember coming home in 2016 from a media tour and it seems very glamorous. I was, you know, one day in Texas and the next day somewhere else. And then I come home and I just felt like something was off and what was off for me which ultimately led to the evolution of my career and the creation of Hustle Like a Mom, was I just felt like the ambitions of my 20s were no longer serving me in my 30s. And first of all, I had asked myself why, like what was going on that was so off? But I'd come from that trip and it just didn't feel right anymore. And even though I was an entrepreneur before, I just felt like the trajectory had to change. The travel wasn't exactly fulfilling. Just nothing was fulfilling my soul enough anymore. And so what I did, because I'm a journalist before anything else, I launched a little show on YouTube. I'd never done it. It was like the last person to join YouTube. It was terrible. And I did this thing called Hustle Like a Mom, which was going to be an interview series because that's all I knew how to, like, that's really what I thought I knew how to do better than anything else. And one thing led to another over the years. And between 2016 and 2019, I was like, okay, I'm ready to host events. So I started hosting events for Hustle Like a Mom. And now we've come to a place through COVID where I've really learned first for myself and then with the clients that I began coaching over the years, mom entrepreneurs, we need a system that's unique for us because we have different choices that we've made. And I use choices instead of obligations because I'm not obligated to be any kind of mom, right? I mean, obviously I want to take care of my kids. You want to keep, you want to keep everybody healthy, but you're not obligated to be a stay at home mom. You're not ob obligated to be a corporate mom. I'm not obligated to be an entrepreneur. You need to find what works for you. And so with it, within that, I've created a system called edit to expand and we plan so that you are realistic with what the day could bring with what the week could bring. I love other entrepreneurs and what they do. And it's great advice. It's just not great advice for me and my people. And so I need to figure out something that would work for me and then obviously test it on my one-on-one -on -one clients. And that's yeah. 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 Perfect segue. So I just want to say for a second, I've been to your events and they are incredible. And I, I hate to use this word, but I'm going to use this word anyway. The tribe that you attract, it really does come from your vibe because you are so bubbly and so energetic and enthusiastic. And so all of your people are too. And I just absolutely love being a part of your community and a, a part of your tribe and, and village, both in person and digitally. You know, I think I love, I love the, the concept that there's more than just business to it. I do believe that any, we can call it organization, any community, any tribe, any, any hovering of humans, 
in order for it to work, there has to be that sort of set energy. And yes, I thrive on, I literally thrive on other people's success. One of my three core values is impact. And so I gauge every, going back to planning, I gauge every yes or no, whether it's personal or professional, based on, am I really creating impact for somebody or am I doing something that I feel like, oh, you know, the PT, it's going to be, it's going to make the, you know, the PTA happy, meaning like I have to do it, right? Or I don't really think this is going to impact my kids. Like if it's not going to impact somebody in a meaningful way, I don't need to do it. I don't need to bring 20 oranges to the field trip because I don't think my kids will care. Like they'll care if I come and do an orange, I don't know, juice mix in front of their, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like it has to be something that's really impactful, but doing something out of guilt, which I think is something I know you talk about a lot, doing something out of guilt is not productive for you. It sucks the limited amount of time that you already have. And that goes for, again, personal and professional. So I go back to, for me, you know, as far as like vibe, yeah, I, I want it to be impactful. That's how I pick what I put out for Hustle Like Mom. It's what I pick out. Like, why am I on this podcast? I feel like you create impact. If me being here saying one morsel of something creates impact for somebody else that's listening, I'm okay allocating the 45 minutes of time or whatever we are going to spend together. That's worth it. I may not go on like some other podcasts where I feel like, you know what, maybe it's going to be good quote unquote ratings, although yours are really good too, but maybe it's going to be good. <laughs> just saying, maybe it's going to be good ratings, but what's the point of wasting my time there? Am I doing it for my ego, which is another driver? I'm like, no, like shut that down. It's not ego. It's not about guilt. You, you have to do it because it matters to you or to you and your family. Mm-hmm. Done. 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 End of story. So as I mentioned before, today we're talking about realistic planning. It's the new year now, and everyone's like, okay, new year, new you, fresh start. So that's what I want to jump into that. So what does realistic planning look like for entrepreneurs? What does it look like for moms? What does it look like for mom entrepreneurs? All of that. Yeah. So again, I'm going to speak to mom, mom entrepreneurs, because I think an entrepreneur with a different lifestyle choice and again, even a different lifestyle choice than the between drop off and pick up mompreneur may not gravitate fully to what I'm about to say. And that's fine because this still gets back to they're going to pick what's realistic for them. So assuming that you're vibing with the between drop off and pick up mompreneur, you kind of perked up when I said that my the ambitions of my 20s were no longer serving me in my 30s and I needed to find a different way. You may be raising your hand and saying like, what else does this chick have to say? So for us, realistic planning means two things. The first few things that I do in the beginning of the year is, and again, if you're listening to this and it's later in the year and you haven't done it, guess what? It's a new dawn. It's a new day. And not just because Michael Buble said it. It really is. <laughs> you got to You got to get a Buble in. You, it, we're recording this in December, people. You got to get a Buble in. So, it, you know, it's a new dawn. It's a new day where, whenever you're listening to this. But obviously in the beginning of the year, you feel that the most. So the first, first thing that I do in the beginning of the year is I ask myself, and I revisit this every year, what are my core values? And right off the bat, oftentimes when I'm doing this with my HLAM inner circle members, or I've done this with clients, they'll say, well, obviously family. And uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm mocking for a reason. And obviously my friends and obviously my health. I'm like, really? So I, I want you to think for a second, if anybody's listening to this little bit of a homework, Value-driven entrepreneurship and value-driven planning in general does not necessarily mean you have to pick family. You don't have to pick family if that's not really the number one or two or three thing that you revolve everything around. So just as an example, my three core values are impact, gatherings, because I love getting people together in any capacity. Like I'll say yes to that PTA thing where I'm the mom that gets all the parents at the house and we have a party. I do that because that I enjoy. Somebody else is like, oh girl, I'd rather bring the oranges. You do you. So for me, it's gatherings, impact, and flexibility. So instead of saying family, because that's not my, I don't revolve everything around my family. Okay. But I do like flexibility. I like knowing that if something, if I need to mold around, whether it's 
a podcast recording, a TV segment. My son's sick today, so I've taken a lot of things off the table at the end, after this podcast because I got to go to him. I like a life that allows me flexibility. It's why I walked away from certain things 10 years ago so that I can have that flexibility today. So think about that. So value-driven entrepreneurship is the first thing. And the second thing is, this gets into the realistic part of it, reverse engineer your year. There should be no like, oh, that nutcracker performance again. Like, you know, it's coming. You know, it's approximately coming. So I, and you know when the birthdays are and you know, you know, if you want to spend your anniversary with your husband or not. You, so I literally will sit down and I, it's actually, I don't know if you can see this, but it's in my planner, in the edit to expand planner that we created for HLAM Inner Circle. I sit down, I look at the whole year and I plop in the big moments. You can't know everything, right? You're not going to know everything, but you're kind of going to know, well, you're, you're going to know certain things. You're going to know when are the kids' vacations? When are my top holidays? When, you know, religious or other? When do I kind of want to go on vacation with them? All these, and then also the personal. So for example, if you're, you're in the fashion business, so you, you know, for example, Tara, that there's certain parts of the year where you will probably be walking a trade show. Okay, so you know that, okay, maybe that's not the time where I'm going to plan a five day family trip. So at the beginning of the year, I reverse engineer my year with the big moments as much as possible. And then at the beginning of the quarter, when you have a better idea, I go back in for the for the next three months and I say, okay, I kind of have a better idea. Okay. Oh, now I know that, you know, my kids, you know, Aladdin performance is not going to be sometime in February, but it's actually February 6th or whatever it is this year. I don't even remember the date yet because I haven't gotten it. But I'll know and then I'll plug it in. So those are the first two things that I do at the beginning of the year or whenever you're listening is sit down and really think about your values so you know where to say yes and where to say no. And then reverse engineer the rest of the year so that there's less of that guilt and surprise. It it works. Trust. (laughs) Yeah. No, I I totally do. There's so many things I want to like jump in on on that. One, you talk about saying like yes and no. How do you make that distinction for yourself? How do you know when you say, you know what, this is something worth pursuing? I think it definitely gets better with age, right? It's one of the major benefits of getting older. You know you, right? And you know when it's you as steering the ship versus the outside forces, society or the ego and all the things, right? That's obviously one thing is getting older is great. So get get older because it's fantastic. If you're listening, you're 29, you're like, oh, I'm like, no, I promise you the other side is so much better. I'm 39. 39 is is fantastic. So another great tool to have at your disposal is knowing your values. So taking the time to realize, wait, so if I, for example, I always use this because I think it's the easiest one to kind of visualize. If I really value travel, legit, then those are the big things that I'm going to plug in for the year. And so if there's an opportunity for me to travel I'm going to figure out how to do that. I'm going to figure out with the kids. I'm going to figure out what they need to do for school, right? And then we're going to do that thing. If something, if that's something that you value, and and again, obviously at this point with most, I think most of your listeners are probably having young, have young kids, I, I assume, you know, they're kind of either going with you with some of those trips, maybe not. But if travel is something that you value, you're going to start planning your yeses around that and your no's. Okay, so if you are, you know, celebrating Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, okay, and you and your family want to travel, you will be okay saying no to all the other things that come up, no matter what they are, you're going to feel good about that. So I think knowing your values is, is really probably one of the best tools to have at your disposal for when you say yes and no. And I know we hear this a lot. I know, Tara, you talk about this a lot. And I love you always show these fun uh, visuals on Instagram with this. But who, who needs guilt? I mean, really? I mean, I hate to say this, but you're going to take the guilt to the grave. Do you think that Marcy around the block is going to give a damn when you're six feet under and you didn't bring? I'm going to go back to the oranges. I'm going to go back to the oranges. Is she going to care? You're not going to care. And the kids will forget about the oranges. If the orange, if you're not an orange queen and that's not your thing, don't worry about the oranges. Yeah, just, just let it go. Just let let go of the oranges. I think that's going to be the theme. I think that's our theme. 
I think it is too. And you know what? It, it's such a true visual because I get stuck so often in doing like, oh, I, I have to do this one little thing. Or, you know, in our household, we have a joke that the enemy of good is better because I'm always trying to like ratchet it up. And you're right. Like if no one notices the oranges, if those go unseen or unappreciated, then just let it go. Then move on to something that they are going to appreciate or something that actually does have more value in it. This episode is brought to you by Modern Mom Style Box. Upgrade your wardrobe and enjoy unlimited styles for just $60 a month. Modern Mom Style Box is the first rental clothing subscription designed exclusively for moms and moms to be. Get started today with a free trial. Use promo code PTO. Yes, and more value in it, more value for your kids in certain scenarios, more value for you. You know, I I hate to bring this up again, but like there's so many activities with kids whether it's school or outside, and you're asked constantly, you get those emails. We've all gotten the emails where it's like, we need the volunteers. Can you be backstage? And you feel, yeah, you feel like, oh, somebody has to do it. But so for example, my, my daughter just did the Nutcracker. Okay, I did not volunteer for that. One, I did not want to be backstage with 30 little girls. Sorry, not going to do it. Just not doing it. I want to come and enjoy my kid. But if I, for example, was a former, like I know somebody who was a former dancer. Oh my God, for her, this was fantastic. Me, I am super excited in the, in the coming year to do like a little, I know, shocker ladies. I want, I'm going to do a little like entrepreneurial kind of mini workshop with the kids. That drives me excited. I want to empower them. Great. I'm going to come in for that. My kid's going to be excited because like they're going to do that thing where they're like, that's my mom. Yes. Great. She'll remember that. I just know this. Like, maybe I'm imagining this. I feel like she'll remember that for like the rest of her life. She will not remember if I'm backstage at the, at the Nutcracker. She knows mama doesn't care. Mama would rather go get the pregame uh, espresso martini. Really excited about that. And that's fine. And that's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. You're still at the performance. You're still there supporting her. Absolutely. And then everyone wins. Everyone wins. And the mom who wanted to be there was actually there. And the one who was guilted into it is just going to be really ticked off for the rest of the day. And I don't want that for myself. And I don't want that for my kids to see me like that. Like, oh, here's mom showing up again to be like whatever it is that she doesn't want to be. No. Yeah. I, I agree. I The last two years, I was actually the president of our PTA, but it was just too much between work and that. And I mean, that's like a full-time job all in, in and of itself at our school. I just had to step away. And I said, no, I just simply can't do all of it. But now it has freed up my time to obviously that I could focus on work, but it's freed up my time that I'm able to do more like boots on the ground volunteering for whether it's our lunch program or ho the holiday boutique. And so I took a step away from the management of it or the leadership of it so that I can actually be, like I said, helpful from day to day things. And that fills me with so much joy. Go to the holiday boutique and you see their cute little faces and they're buying gifts for their, for their aunties and their grandmother. And that makes me so happy. So I agree 100%. Oh. 100%. It is that idea of where are you allocating, not, not even allocating, where are you receiving the real joy? You know, we can say value from one side, but where are you really receiving the joy? Like I know in May, my kids have like a multicultural fair. I want to be in on that. That's exciting. I want to meet the parents there. I want to learn something. My kids will be there. They love uh, travel and, you know, global studies. Awesome. I'm going to be there. Great. That's something that even thinking about it now, I'm like, that's going to be fun. And I'm going to, by the way, going back to like planning, that's on my reverse engineer for the year. I know, I don't know the exact date, but I know that sometime in May that's going to happen. And so I will, you know, probably call the school a few months before and just say like, do you have the date? But I know that I shouldn't be, for example, in the two weeks time frame when they usually do it, I should not be leading or planning for like a major coaching program, right? Because I'm not going to have the proper time to like prepare. I'm probably going to be 
we're like representing like a country. I want to do fun with it. I want to do, I love, I'm a crafter. I love doing that stuff. I want to prepare and I want to be like fully with my brain and my body and everything be there. Mm-hmm. That's what I love. You know, yep. that that's when you're living life as opposed to like the to-do list. Yep. Picking up those oranges. I know. Don't do not do it. The oranges, man. By the way, I like to eat oranges. I should, like, if, you know. <sighs> <laughs> you don't want the orange people to come out after us. I know. <laughs> I know. And then I'm thinking, like, Tara, what if you have, like, an orange campaign? And I'm like, Tara loves oranges. I know I it. Love them. I love <laughs> Vitamin C. Although, I'm just going to say, kiwis have more vitamin C than oranges. I'm just I'm Just, just saying. Just, just for the saying. orange lobby out there. I would. I would be saying. <laughs> <laughs> that cracks me up. So, you know, you're obviously we're talking about planning. I, you're big into quarterly planning. Why quarterly planning versus like month to month? Can you explain that a little bit to me? Month to month feels like a roller coaster, right? But then also a whole year, if you just do the whole, like people used to do, and some, by the way, I shouldn't say people, I there are businesses and entrepreneurs and certain families even that will do like the long plan out, right? Like the one year or businesses do like the five year projections. That's not usually working for me in that capacity. And most of the women that I work with, it won't work for them. Doesn't mean it won't work for other companies. I like to do quarterly planning because I feel like three months you have, it's meaty enough, but manageable enough. So you do, you know, if we're doing like the quarterly planning sessions and we pick three very specific goals based on my edit-to-explain plan method, I always say, we're going to pick the three goals that they're very specific that are meaty enough where it's going to take you three months, manageable enough where you can complete it in three months. And that again, goes back to this concept of being realistic. And as I've done in the past years, I've done quarterly planning sessions. We're doing them in 2023 exclusively for HLAM Inner Circle members. But what I learned is that you can actually apply the system to your personal life as well, right? If you're managing your home, you are the legit manager of We'll call it a business. It's a different type of business, but it's still a business. And I think you can still take that concept of, okay, here's my quarter. Here are my three set goals. What, you know, there's a specific one. Usually one is related to finances. One is about expansion. And then the third one is a de-stressor. I'm going to put these down and I'm going to make sure that this is something that I can break down into micro moves and then allocate out. And then when the quarter is complete, you're like, yes. I did it. I stayed focused on those three things. I'm ready to, in some cases, build upon them. Or now I'm ready because I have the foundation to do something else because I've created that. Sometimes there's a a mild continuation of the goals. Hold on a second. Hold on. I am live recording. Do you see the red sticker on the... This is, you know what? We can... Systems. This is a lesson learned. Can, can I do this? Yeah, sure. Okay, so you can't see this. Get, bring me the two post-its. This is a live lesson, ladies. Literally, it's on the inside. So David, who's not feeling well today, knows that we have a post-it system. Come, give me. Except mommy forgot to change the post-its. Mommy. So it's not David. It's not David's fault. No. But I said, didn't you? That's why I whispered just now. I said, didn't you see the red post-it? Which means that I am usually, they, they know that it's either TV or a podcast or something. I am live and you can't walk in. But there's a yellow one too, which means knock first. Green, which was the one on the door, says I'm ready for hugs. So it oh. is not the child's fault. He's- he's ready for hugs i didn't even get into the post-its but that was a live response i'm like didn't you see did you see my whisper i'm like didn't you see the red post-its no he's like and he showed me he's, he's like, like no you have green, like, and like, There's red. A green one, and the red one was inside i'm like so the other system i have is post-its <laughs> Post, that's actually a great, I never even considered that. That's a really good so one. So that's something that I started during COVID because I had at the time, let's see, he was five and a half and his sister was just shy of six. And so I needed the visuals. And so, yes, sometimes they would play on the floor in front of me, like in the room, but it, and sometimes they were actually really good and I would record while they were here. But then I'm like, okay, we need some kind of visuals. And they would like be outside. I have these post-its. Here's what they mean. And yes, it takes a minute. This did not happen overnight. I just want people to know it takes a minute. But you see, it worked, except I messed up. 
But the three post-its, red means no bueno, yellow is like, you know, you can, you need to knock because something might be going on and green means I'm ready for a hug. I love that. That is great. I'm ready for a hug. You're big into systems and I appreciate that. It helps. Anything you can systemize and take out of your brain. I'm not saying that I'm the best. I think that there, I'm, I'm a work in progress. I'm also always, I'm not joking, ladies. I literally go back to my own notes and I'm like, what did I just tell my clients? <laughs> Let me make sure that I'm applying it because everybody gets off the rails. Do you know what I mean? And then every time, by the way, I always say like every time I get off the rails or I see enough of the mom entrepreneurs that I work with kind of doing something in a, in a similar way, I'm like, okay, how can we like tweak this and make this a little bit better? And then inevitably it'll become something that quote unquote becomes like a little system, a little extra tool that we put in our tool belt. One of the things, I think I talked to you about this. One of the things that I started doing during COVID and I continue to do because I think it's great is a fake commute, which I love. After the kids get dropped off at school, come back, and I will go, even if I have three minutes, three minutes, sometimes I love to go 10, no cell phone, I'm not doing a podcast, not even Tara's podcast, nobody's in my ear, I'm not answering any questions, and to the best of my abilities, I'm also not thinking about the kids or work. I just want to like separate so that they went to school, I commute, fake commuted, and then I'm like, okay. Now I can go and do whatever it is, whatever it is that my planner tells me that I'm supposed to do today. I'm ready for it. Otherwise, if you don't take that little, that little pause, that fake commute in the morning, you rush from breakfast straight to whatever the next thing is. Nothing's going to happen dramatically in those three minutes if you do the walk, except that you will free up brain cells to be able to be at your best capacity when you sit down to do either the homework stuff or the other, you know, for your business work stuff. Yeah, that's really good. I'm going to try to do that because oftentimes as soon as I drop my son off, I'm just like immediately in my phone, in my computer, as if I just landed at work and which is what it is. And then you're just off running. But I think that you need some time in between. What does your day-to-day look like? You know, we're talking like big macro planning. We're talking, you know, reverse engineering your year. We're talking about quarterly planning. But like, what about day to day? I find sometimes for me that that's where I get hung up. I think that's probably most people's cases across the board. I think whether you're like a bazillionaire or, you know, just starting off your business, whatever you are, you know, financially, personally, et cetera. I think it's the day to day that kind of makes the day, (laughs) makes the year, right? So I would say, obviously, no no two days are the same. And I think that probably goes for any mom or any mom entrepreneur. Some things that I've tried in the past is I will set the agenda the previous day. I've learned over the years never to overpack because if it's minute to minute, you're never going to make it. And so there's like a lot of statistics out there on how many items should be on your daily, you know, things that I want to check off. And really, if you have this is just a ballpark, but if you have more than we'll call four or five, it's going to become what I used to have years ago, that rolling list. And same thing on the home front, right? The rolling list. It's like, okay, I got to do this, 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 this. Are you really going to be able to do all that and still feel like a human? I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying, how are you going to feel at the end of the day? And then what are you left with for tomorrow? I'm totally going to forget the amazing, he's like a ph- philosopher, Oh, and this is definitely from his book, the, uh, I think it's The Four Questions. And why am I forgetting the name? But he says, if you basically, if you give more than your best, like if you are depleting yourself today, there's no way you're going to give your best tomorrow. And I love that. So if I get, again, I'm not saying that there's not a season, a moment, a week. Look, I'm realistic. Like I'm actually in my week right now. We have like a, you know, a thing kicking off in two days. I get, and then I want to shut down for two weeks, almost three weeks for the holidays because this is my pod season. So I'm in, I'm in my kind of kooky week, but that's like, that should be your exception. If you deplete yourself today, you will be less than tomorrow. What is the point of that? Beautifully said. I love that. Pamela Peckerman, I adore you. You inspire me all the time. Tell everyone where we can find you. 
You can follow my business shenanigans at Pamela Peckerman on Instagram. You can also follow at Hustle Like a Mom for a little bit more meaty business scoop. And obviously, you can check out all the offerings that we have for mom entrepreneurs at hustlelikeamom.com. We do have some really awesome free resources and other programs that you might be interested in if you are thinking about joining the Between Drop Off and Pick Up Mompreneur squad. Which I am a part of. I know. I'm so excited. You're a hell yes. I love it. Yes, I, love it. I was a hell yes. He emailed me and I was like, hell yes, let's do this. Let's plan. Yeah. Let's do this. Yes, I know. And I again, just to end with something, just this idea that we should be doing it all alone. I mean, A, it's boring, but nobody nobody ever was expected to mother alone. Like, I'm not going to get into the history of it, but like, let's go back thousands of years. We lived, we lived in groups. Okay. And let's like, even just go back a few hundred years outside of America. I come from an Eastern European family. It's like wolves. Okay. I lived, it's true. Everybody lives on top of each other. And I say this in the best of ways. Sometimes it's annoying, but the benefits outweigh any of the annoyingness. So why do we, and I think this country kind of, America is coming to the fact that there's so much benefit in having grandparents nearby. There's so much benefit when your sister lives down the block. That, that's your world. That's your, that's your tribe. And then the same thing for businesses like Tara, you're part of my tribe. I don't know how I would function without having these women by my side. I don't. And I I feel the same way about you and going back to your energy and your vibe and all of that. Pamela Peckerman, I adore you so much. Thanks Tara. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Modern Mom Probs. I hope you enjoyed our deep dive in today's problem with me, your host, Tara Clark. Join me next time when I'll be interviewing another great guest and tackling another Modern Mom problem. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review and a rating. As always, you could head over to Modern Mom Probs on Instagram and give me a follow or check out my book, Modern Mom Probs, A Survival Guide for 21st Century Mothers, available online wherever books are sold. Well, that's it for today. See you next time, folks.